Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are so blessed to have you with us here today as we open the Word of God and we examine the truth of God's Word together. If you are serving a God of love, how should we respond as sanctified, holy Christians to, to the world? I think how we are created and our, our bodies, how we are embodied, are, 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 and then everything that follows with that, with gender and sexuality, is very purposefully created by God. Jesus took us back to the beginning in Matthew 19 to, and talked about this a little bit. When the Pharisees asked him about divorce, Jesus said in Matthew 19, chapter 4, verse, he said, he answered and said unto them, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Jesus was extremely clear. The creation design of God, the mandate from the beginning, was he made them male and female purposefully to, to be put together in the marriage relationship. And outside of the marriage covenant, any other lifestyle outside of that is condemned by Scripture. But we want to respond to everyone in love that's beset by any sin, be it that or any other. We, we want to have the opportunity to reach them with the gospel. If we're not loving to them, we won't have that opportunity. Right. So we want, to, we want to love everybody. We were all once lost in sin. Somebody loved us, and that gave the opportunity for the gospel to get to us. What Raya is saying is a good balance of being inclusive mm -hmm. by not saying, I can't, I'm just going to write them off. And James, you can read that if we have respect to persons, we commit sin. That's right. Uh, because God is no respecter of persons. And so when God looks at a person, he's, he's looking at a soul. He's looking at, that's my creation. I love them. Now, he's not happy with the actions if they're contrary to his word and to his commands. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> but we have to have with the spirit and with the spirit of Christ, we should not, because those two do not go together, have a spirit of racism or exclusion. Jesus taught us that whatsoever ye have done unto the least of these, to the very least, we're to love them. We're to love them. That's whatsoever you've done to them. It's what you have done to Jesus. I just wanted to share this scripture with you from Isaiah, fifth chapter. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. And woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Let the word of God prevail. And that's in essence where we have to go back to, um, as Raya was sharing with us, the, what does the word of God say? The scripture bears this out in other places, doesn't it? In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, it says that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So Christ is the head of this body. I can't, I can't assume that position. And there's lying and wait to deceive. We can see it all around us on social media, it's reaching out to our children. But it's not, as you said, it's not my rules. God is sovereign. That's right. He is God. And we are deferring to him. I'm his servant. I'm subject to the law of God. And I can't put myself in the place of judgment, as you said, to say this is okay and this is not. I'm glad I have the word of God to go to. And I don't wanna be deceived but I want to speak the truth in love so that we can all come into that body of Christ. At the root of all unrighteousness is 
the root of sin that is found in everyone's heart. The criticism that I hear often is that modern churches do not ha- have compromised the doctrine of, of Jesus Christ by preaching inclusivity at the expense of the standards of the gospel. But the Bible is inerrant and it is clear in its standard of holiness. And it has not changed in the centuries that have gone on before, and it's still the same today. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is why we can trust the Word of God, because the Word of God does not change. The the whims of men will rise and fall. Solomon said that there is no new thing under the sun. Now, Solomon didn't own a computer or an iPod, And you could say, well, that proves right there that the Bible is wrong. No, there are all forms of entertainment all throughout history. There are all forms of technology all throughout history. The trappings may have changed, but at the end of the day, the world is still the same. Sin is still present. Satan is still running rampant to try and attract people away from the gospel. But yet the word of God remains constant. And when we stand on the truth of holiness we can stand and rest assured that that truth has an answer for every question. It has an answer for every lifestyle. If there is a question about what I bring to the table when I come to God, God has the answer for that. Because He said, the nature you come with is sinful. And I want to change that nature. And I'm going to give you the power to have my nature and to live in holiness and in power through the blessing of sanctification. That is the beauty of the gospel. Everyone is welcome at the foot of the cross. There was no one who ever approached Jesus in the scriptures that he turned away. There is no respect of persons with God. And so if you have questions, if you have concerns, and you want to know more about the truth of the gospel, we welcome you to contact us through our website. We invite you to visit one of our local congregations Those locations can also be found on our website, and we welcome you at any one of those locations. We would love to talk to you further about the truth of the gospel, about conversion, about sanctification, and about our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you all for joining me here today and for this wonderful discussion, and we thank you for joining us as we have delved into God's Word.